What's up, y'all? It's Luna Stower here, Chief Impact Officer at iSpire for iSpire Sessions. And today we have a very important and lovely guest, Alex Friedman. He's the president at Traditional. And we're going to hear a little bit about his story, the things he's seeing in the space, and get a little bit of some tidbits about what brought you here and, and what we can all grow from. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. Yeah. So how did you get here? What's what's your story? What brought you to this role? And yeah, what's something that we can all kind of see you and understand a little bit more about what, what brought you here? Yeah, I had a pretty interesting uh, path in cannabis to get here today. I got my official start in cannabis as an attorney for the city of Los Angeles. I was uh, involved in 2017 writing all of LA's cannabis laws. And then after that, I served as general counsel to the LA Department of Cannabis Regulation. So I was there right at the beginning when LA started handing out their first adult use licenses. I was there when we were issuing all the new cultivation licenses, distribution licenses, the first round of social equity licenses. Nice. Um, it was it was a true startup. We were I was literally typing up licenses myself on my computer, handing issuing them. Um, so I got to see the industry from a, a very unique vantage point, and I, I fell in love with it. Um, and you're still standing. You I'm, survived. I'm still standing. I hope to be standing tomorrow. Yeah. Um, it's never nothing's any uh, ever. Can take, you can't take anything for granted in the cannabis industry. No. Um, but so I did that for two years, and it was fascinating. I saw how the sausage was made, and it was it was definitely fascinating. It was also at times to see how government works very discouraging. Um, but I got to know a ton of great people in the industry, and so I left the government and jumped right into the industry to work as an attorney with dozens of different brands and operators. And after a little while and seeing kind of who were the real guys and who were the people who were doing it the right way, um, I joined Traditional uh, a couple years ago to help uh, help the founder run the company and uh, you know the founder's been doing it for 20 years growing and selling and legacy yeah so the brand's only been around for two years but um, we've been doing this for decades and we're now uh, got you know one of the biggest growers in the state we have stores and uh, we're you know pushing 500 stores that are brands yeah. uh, our different brands are in we have multiple brands we're expanding our product line so we're trying to do it all in California and it's not easy no, but it's worth it, isn't it? If you can do it here, you can do it anywhere. Absolutely. That's our guiding principle. You know, we're not getting distracted with anything other than being one of the best cultivators and distributors and partner to retailers in the state. Yeah, stick to what you do and do it well. Exactly. I think there's a lot of magic in that. Um, congratulations on all of your success. It's been amazing to watch you guys blow up. I know you guys were here at the um, at the last event as well, and it was such a um, – it was just heartwarming to see – local LA brands and local LA consumers being able to interface outside of a dispensary scene and really seeing us integrate in the community. Yeah, we love doing that stuff to, you know, meet our customers and partners up close. I mean, it's, it makes it all worthwhile, all the hard work uh, that goes into running a brand in cannabis to when you get to talk to the people who are actually enjoying and passionate about your product, you realize what you're doing it for. Yeah, and it's humanizing both sides, right? Yeah. You're not this faceless brand and they're not just, you know, a number on a, on a marketing sheet. Yeah, we really always get that feeling when we're talking directly to our customers is, you know, they may think traditional is this really slick looking brand. They don't know if we're founder run and operated. We've been doing this for 20 years. We don't have any Wall Street investors. Mm. We don't have a board of directors telling us what we're doing. We're, we're, stretching every dollar we can to to do what we're doing um and when people who love cannabis they learn that it really changes their outlook they know it's not just a great brand and a great product but it's really representing what people love about cannabis which is mm -hmm. all the traditional values uh yeah and that, integrity exactly and showing up in a right way exactly yeah it's been it's been a crazy ride a lot of people have gone through many ups and downs we call it the roller coaster or the pivot game or you know some people just call it hell um, a lot of times it's our heaven too. Like you said, you have to really want it. So um, has anything come up for you that's been challenging that you've been able to overcome that you can share and maybe shed some light on some positive options for some people that are get, getting stuck? Yeah, I mean, I feel like every day there's there's new challenges <laughs> right. and I feel like some days I'm heading home and I'm the highest of highs thinking, wow, it's all it's all going great. It's and then, a dream. And the I next love day, it. yeah, you feel like you got punched in the face. Yeah, it's a nightmare. Get me out of here. Uh, so, of all the challenges, I think one thing that we went through this year 
um, as we've been launching all sorts of new products and brands. And so we started as, you know, as growers. And so launch, we launched with Top Shelf Flower. That was challenging enough to build that distribution model, but it's it's what our core skills were at. Right. You're not as just chasing that, like, you know, race to the bottom on pricing. Exactly. And as, but as we've launched, you know, infused pre-rolls, pens, extracts, it's stuff that, you know, we're just learning as we go along. And so, you know, everything from packaging to using the right hardware to the formulations, you know, it's trial and error and we're, we're learning. It's a lot more challenging than we thought. And the lesson we've taken away from it is really to partner with other companies in the industry that can help us get to the finish line. So that once we started working with iSpire, you guys have really helped us understand what our options are, how to plan, how to pick the best hardware for our products. And otherwise we'd just be, you know, grasping in the dark, right. uh, making a lot more mistakes. And so we're, uh, we've learned that lesson very well this year. And as we go into next year, um, we are, are, are going to make sure we, we stick to that lesson. Yeah. It kind of goes back to everyone being in their lane, right? It's like, to your point, we've been doing this also for a couple of decades, but more formally in the cannabis space for the last few years. And, you know, the ability to scale, if you know, you're wearing every hat, it's much harder to run fast. Hey you, stop scrolling. Aren't you looking for hardware? I'm Messiah, the print shop manager at iSpire. We've just doubled our print capacity. Why? Because you're about to run out of dosing hardware. Our print shop? It's not just good. It's why didn't I call them earlier good? And this? This isn't just hardware. It's your quick solution to success. A blend of form, function, and I need this now. Do you enjoy waiting weeks for custom printing? Didn't think so. We're about blinking at stunt speed. Shipping so fast, it'll make your head spin. In-house print capabilities, check. Lightning fast shipping, double check. Now, if you don't know, then now you know. That was easy. industry is so cutthroat you really have to find your partners and find good people and who have the same long-term goals and the same values otherwise you get eaten alive in this industry you know yeah. there's there's nowhere to hide so you got to stick together yeah the, the long term is huge right because it can be it's still a cpg you know it can be considered a transactional thing it's like i am paying for this i want this thing but we know that cannabis doesn't work like that it doesn't fit into that model of cpg absolutely you know so what are you excited about in the upcoming year in 2024 in the industry in general and how do you think that that'll impact traditional you know i think we're seeing customers get a lot smarter oh yes thank goodness and so that's that's really exciting because we First and foremost, we're about quality. Mm -hmm. um, and so we- And educating around it, right? Yeah. Because what is it if people don't understand it? Yeah, and I think you know, we're, we're not trying to do a race to the bottom, but we are trying to normalize uh, basically, you know, affordable, great cannabis at every, every category. God bless you. You know, and that's so, what we're, we're, we're seeing as customers realize that, hey, you don't need to pay $80 out the door for great fire weed, you can get stuff including traditional for 45 50 dollars you know we're trying to put less money in our pocket mm. and leave more money in the customer's pocket mm. and they can get the same product and they'll come back to the dispensary because exactly. what we're seeing is the attrition back to the traditional market is mainly sticker shock so yeah. it's actually when if all brands stuck to this and did this model it's kind of that abundance mindset of a rising tide raises all boats and if we're not acting in these you know, short-lived ways of just, you know, a dollar today instead of a million tomorrow, which is very much how we're seeing, especially California. I love that. It's it's helping to make sure that the retailers stay in business. Yeah, we want to have, you know, every, every day great prices, not trying to just go with some crazy deal or promo just mm -hmm. to try to for this week steal the customers from somewhere else right, right a we, bogo and then it then there's no. the argument that it can water down the the your brand and it's we just want, it's we a, want everyday low headache. prices right everything yeah. still where it's sustainable for the store can make money we can make money we're not going to make as much money but that's the whole point of our company is like we don't have wall street investors who are we have board meetings where they tell us you know hey every quarter you need to do this or 
you can't offer these prices to these stores. Nobody's telling us we have to do that. No, you so, go with your gut. Yeah, so we go team. and listen to the retailers and they say, hey, what price is this going to really make it fly? Make sure the customer is like, yeah, it's unbeatable price and that's what we provide. Mm-hmm. And we've been employing that strategy for the last year and it's a big reason why the brand has gotten so big and we're going to stick to that. And it's not just traditional. We have other brands now, Martians, which is from our, our farm, and Astronauts, and we're launching even more brands. And that principle is central to everything we do. Even just, you know, with uh, we have our pens coming out with iSpire. It's, you know, we're not trying to, we're not trying to get rich off of it. We're no, trying to, be able to provide, provide yeah. I mean, you're looking at the market. It's like people want vapes. It's, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's, that's part of being in this pivot game is mm-hmm. saying we make good product. We know that our um, internal kind of compasses are set to a due north. So it almost doesn't matter what category you enter in. You're going to bring the traditional approach and your co- company culture and your value system to that. Yeah. You know, it, categories in and of themselves don't, aren't problematic. It's yeah. the brands and the values behind them that can make them so. And if we have a great product, then it's just a matter of time till the customers, more and more customers try it and, and they stick to it. And that's why our brand gets into more stores and our sales go up. And when we do introduce new products, it, in, in just a matter of time, they start uh, catching on. Customers try them and they come back for more. And you know, it's, that's what we're focused on is always having a great product. The rest figures itself out. Right. Um, and, a, and a good story. I think yeah. that it's really important that you keep naming that your instincts and your SOPs and your company ethos is what's driving it and it's not being influenced by anything that's about a bottom line. No, and apart from, you know, working with hardware partners, everything else we do in-house, nothing that goes in traditional is grown by somebody else. It's right. grown in our own facilities. That's huge. People don't even know that's a thing. Yeah, we we trim it ourselves. We don't use machines. Everything is hand-trimmed, wearing gloves. I didn't know that. Every every traditional jar and bag is hand packaged. We don't use machines. Uh, we do our own distribution for our pens and extracts. We have our own Type Seven lab. So when a customer is, uh, you know, with one of our new hash holes and there's live rosin, it's traditional flour mm. grown by us, trimmed by us. We roll our own joints. We infuse it with rosin from our own lab. We package it ourselves. We distribute it to the store ourselves. Um, well, that's the only way you can guarantee you're going to have a great product. It's a rarity. Yeah. Are you guys doing any storytelling on LinkedIn or on Instagram that folks can learn a little bit more about you or follow along on your journey and share and support? Our Instagram is Los Angeles Traditional. You can see lots about our products there. You can also go to traditional.com. I think we have the best uh, website address around. Uh, it was uh, that's uh, we're very. Uh, very uh we cherish our traditional.com it's, it's like a, having a nike.com or coca-cola.com yeah it's our um, it's our little flag that we yeah. get to stake to say that traditional is important to us we're not you know denying the legacy we're not just building where they left off we're bringing them along and growing it yeah and they can you know customers can come down we have a couple retailers or, or retails ourselves we have some flagship company stores one at uh in mid city in la at 4665 west pico and downtown in the Arts District at 2222 East Olympic Boulevard. Um, they can see all of our products there. Um, and they just, you know, everyone who's interested in traditional, they can always reach out. Uh, we're working 24 seven. There's no layers of corporate bureaucracy. You know, anyone can get in touch with me directly or the nice. founder directly. And, you know, we're, we're, we got more coming. So even if they're not, uh, uh, don't know about us yet or, don't know how to find out more. We're coming to wherever they are. Absolutely. And we're, you're going to be here tonight at our first Friday event, of course. which is so yeah. exciting. We love supporting you guys. Yeah, likewise. Thank you so much, Alex, for being on our iSpire sessions. This I really appreciate you having me. Combo. Yeah, it's been great. Thank and thanks you. for all your work that you did on, you know, setting the stage for licensing. I know that that is a big emotional and energetic labor. And the fact that you can kind of bring that level of intelligence here um, to the space is is life saving for us. We need more people who really understand the ins and outs and can speak all the languages. And it's a it's a, being a liaison, so to speak, um, between the roots and the suits is really the key to success and survival. Yeah, and I wish we had more of that uh, to help us in government today, help the industry because we need it more than ever. Amen. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you.